one of the ways you can make yourself healthier is by training your body's ability to adapt. So one way to do that is to make your muscles stronger. Another way is to improve your endurance. But here's one that a lot of people don't realize is like a muscle. Your body's ability to adjust to temperature. Okay, so if you expose yourself to cold temperatures or hot temperatures, your body will actually improve its ability to acclimate. This may be why when you live in a hot climate, you tend to do okay with hot temperatures versus your friends who maybe live in colder climates and vice versa. So if you're always in 72 degree climate controlled temperature environments, you may be causing your body to become less healthy because you're not strengthening the muscle that adapts to temperature. This one is one nobody I'm, considers. I'm actually glad you went this way because I've been meaning to off air even ask you this. So fuck it, we'll just do it right now. Uh, because I, I'm never good at explaining to people exactly what's going on when you cold plunge. I think the, I think the space advertises the benefits of the cold plunge wrong, like they do with many things, right? The same way we used to market fasting, I think yeah. the wrong way. I think we market the cold plunge the wrong way too. We, we make it all about sports performance, recovery, or mm -hmm. like mental mindset. I've actually, the, the benefits I always try and, and, and sell to people on it is I've, I've noticed a huge difference in my body's resiliency to like the common cold. Mm -hmm. And I know they're connected. I know that when I'm training that ability to regulate my temperature and do the plunges like crazy, I, I've I'm, I've never felt so resilient like where I could be in a room like this with one of you sick and not get sick. If I'm not doing it, it is like a 99.9% .9 chance I will pick that cold up. What is it that's going on that allows me to to do that? Because it's not necessarily my immune system that I, I'm- It is. In. Well, okay, so they've done studies on um, cold contrast and what they find is that it does stimulate- an immune response. It does seem to trigger um, cascading effects that will in increase the amount of, let's say, T cells that are product uh, produced. Your cytokine production is modulated. But um, I think that that's just part of the story. I don't think that's the whole story. Um, I mean, if we take a step back, a, a healthier body in general is going to be more resilient to any kind of stress, which includes the stress of having to fight mm -hmm. an infection, the stress of having to deal with daily stressors in life, uh, the stress right. of losing well, sleep. Let me, let me stop I'd you. I'd imagine you'd have a stronger response, right, if you weren't exposing yourself uh, frequently to, like, different extreme temperatures. Well, Your body just I, I would be less vulnerable, too, right? Yeah. So, for yeah. example, let's say, uh, you know, when I'm cold plunging, I mean, one of the things that it helps you regulate is stress, right? The, yeah. the ability. And so if, we're, if we are always in this kind of mild low level stressors that are always happening to us. I just came in, let's say, and somebody cut me off, you know, outside and like, in, like, in, like that's a stress, right? Mm -hmm. and, my, and so if you got like that stuff going on and then you also get put in an environment where somebody is also sick and you're not resilient like that because you haven't trained to like manage that, self-regulate those, those mild levels, uh, ups and downs of stress, I would think that makes you more susceptible to getting that cold also. Probably. I, I think it's a lot more complex than we than we understand. Yeah, hence why I can't explain it. Right <laughs> yeah, well. I mean, I do. I, I think <laughs> I just, it's like, I just tell people, trust me, I promise you. Well, look, it's like people will say, oh, it's mental toughness. Anecdote, yeah. Well, but it's, people will say, it's, you it's know, worth it's something. Yeah, like, okay, uh, can you train mental toughness? You can. Yeah. Well, what happens? You just accept the fact that something's hard? I think that's part of it. But I do think, and there's data to support this, that physiologically- Structures of the brain change, how your body responds and reacts to stress changes. You know, for example, when you're when you expose yourself to heat, you know, blood vessels dilate. Okay, your your the way your body sweats changes, where blood flow goes changes. Same thing when you're cold. When you're cold, your blood will move from the extremities, go to your core to keep your core mm -hmm. warm. That there's there's mechanisms involved, and these are simple ones. It's way more complex than what I'm saying. There are mechanisms involved in making those things happen. If you never train them, then you're not going to be as good at dealing with those extremes, period, end of story. Look, I, I remember when I first kind of pieced this together, I had a client who was from <clears throat> Wisconsin. And now she had lived here for a long time. But Wisconsin, there was parts of Wisconsin get real cold, okay, mm -hmm. in the winter. And she, she grew up on a farm. 
So I remember one day we were working out and she was like, oh, my niece wants to come visit. And uh, she, you know, she works on the farm, farm girl, whatever. She's like, it's, and it was over here. It was like November. Okay. Over there, it was already freezing, freezing. Yeah. So she said, you know, she's going to come visit. Is it okay if she works out with us? I'm like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So here we're in California in November. I don't know what it was. 50 something degrees. Maybe at, at the lowest, maybe right. Yeah, it's yeah. like 53 60, degrees. Probably 60. Yeah. So yeah. in she walks in a tank top and shorts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And literally the first thing out of her mouth is like, oh my God, the weather is so, I can't believe how warm it is. And I looked at him like, it's cold. Am I in a sweater? You <laughs> Dude, know, that's how it was when I came back from Chicago. Same thing. It was, it was, and I acclimated just from being there for like three years and coming back. It was like, yeah, it was, it was probably like 50, you know, here and everybody's bundled up with like blankets and everything watching a football game. And I'm just shorts and tank top, just chilling. Totally. So, yeah. Right. I remember when I lived in uh, Palm Springs, it gets so hot there in the summer, so 120 degrees. And I came to visit uh, my family. <clears throat> And it was 88 degrees here, which is hot, right? And everybody's like, oh, my God, it's so hot. And I remember I came, I went outside. I'm like, it's not that hot. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, you think to yourself, like, well, it's because I'm used to, no, no, no. There are, there are physical changes that happen to the body that help you acclimate. It's like, I, for some reason, we don't think this, is, this will happen. But, I mean, obviously, right? If I handle rough objects, do my hands change? Do I develop calluses? Right. Does my skin adapt <clears throat> to the sun? Do people adapt to swimming underwater a lot? They do. We know this. That's all our bodies are, our yeah. adaptation machines. That's right. It's so the right dose. I mean, it's the right exposure. It's it's all of that stuff in consideration, right? And so I think that's where you might get sort of tipped over uh, if if it's like a real extreme version of that, like temperature and you like might leave you a little more susceptible and vulnerable. I, I would imagine that would be look, the case. Look, um, this is, by the way, you can look this up as a fact. Kids that grow up with multiple animals in the house or kids that grow up yeah. on farms, far less likely to develop autoimmune issues and have stronger immune systems. Okay, yeah. why? Go outside, roll in the dirt. They are exposed to way more bacteria, viruses, mold, uh, fungus, all kinds of stuff because animals bring that shit in and out yeah. all the time as little kids. Yep. They get less sick, right? Now you would think, well, viruses, bacteria, mold, those things call cause illness. Maybe we should just like avoid all of them. Yeah. Right. Instead, that causes our bodies to weaken. Yeah. Right. Now, the dose makes the poison. But my point with that is, you know, when in human history, except for the last like, you know, 0.005%, <laughs> when in human history have we been in perfect temperature all the time? Never. Never. It was either too hot or really cold or hot in the morning, cold yeah, at night. Or dry or humid or whatever. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I think that's what what is interesting about the, you know, the big, um, cold plunge movement right now and then also the counter movement to it is i think that it's only been a, a very small time in history where we are we didn't have to naturally learn to adapt to the the fluctuation of temperatures yeah. and i think that it, we haven't put enough decades together to really recognize well what are some of the drawbacks of of not doing that and I think we've maybe made some connections, but I think there's a lot of connections. We've we have atrophied. A, yeah. And then I think what you're seeing, why I think it blew up is because you're getting people like myself that can't quite articulate yeah, what, the, what, the, going what on. the hell is going on. I know it's making me feel way better. And, it, and it's it, it's so obvious that you feel that feeling initial, right away. Yeah. That's another thing too. Like, oh yeah, uh, right away you get the chemical like, immune Yeah, you, get like, at, you go in that thing as, as much of a pain in the ass it is and then you get out of it. I dare you to tell me it's not one of the best feelings you've ever felt afterwards. The yeah. the energy spike, the mental clarity that you yeah. have, like, and then and it, it's how it sustains through the day. So yeah, it's hard as shit to do it. Oh whatever, but I mean, it, it really annoys me that there's a counter movement in our our space now on it because of course, like always. Not everybody knows how to articulate well, what, that, what the benefits are. And so here and comes- Everything has to be connected to, to fat loss. Or and muscle then gain. Yeah, or muscle gain. Yeah, yeah. or, or something that you or can show in a, in a controlled six-week study to right. say that it does this. Oh, this guy said it does this. And we, did, they've, we already showed a study that that doesn't really do that. And so it's like, throw it out. No. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's stupid. It's, a, it's like, God, you, no. so, by the way, by you the way. lose so many people by yes. doing that. Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale going on this month. MAPS bands, half off. And the Hard Gainer bundle of programs is also half off. 
If you're interested, click on that link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. By the way, I want to say this. Um, fat loss and muscle gain are both adaptations as well. Mm -hmm. If your body is generally better at adapting, it will also generally, of course, all things being equal, right? Some guy might have better genetics than you, whatever. Forget that. Talking about just you. If your body overall becomes more uh, effective, better, more efficient at adapting, then that means, generally speaking, it will be better at adapting to stresses like strength training or going in a calorie deficit and trying to burn body fat. So uh, this is why adaptogens, by the way. Adaptogens are a weird category of herbs, which we used to laugh at, okay? The medical community, the scientific community used to make fun of the term adaptogen. What the hell does that mean? Helps your body adapt to stress. Show me the data. What does it do to your hormones? What does it do to whatever? Now we finally have data. Ashwagandha, rhodiola, ginseng, right? What do they do? Well, it looks like they, in many cases, help with everything. How can they help with everything? Because they help the body deal with stress or, to put it differently, they improve your body's ability to adapt. Now, I want to be clear, all the things I just listed pale in comparison to simply training your body yeah. to uh, the elements. I remember thinking about Palm Springs. I remember this. It's middle of summer, okay? You're talking about 120 degree <laughs> heat, okay? Yeah. Heat. Soul melting, like the bottom of your shoe soul. It's like, soul. it's painful hot. Yeah. And I remember driving in the middle of the day to get lunch or whatever, and I'd see roofers, roofers on the roof. Working in that. Working. And I remember looking at them and I'm like. Nuts. Yeah, but they, you know what? They do it, they do it all the time, every yeah. day. I'm sure they feel hot. I'm not saying that they're comfortable up there. But you put me up there. First of all, you can make me as fit as you want in the gym. I could be a super athlete. If I don't do that, I yeah. ain't going to last, no you know, because that's another form of adaptation. It's like when I would, when, you know, even recently, recently I went to go help my dad move something heavy and it was a, a jagged piece of furniture, right? So it's like wood corners or whatever. By this point, my dad's got arthritis everywhere. I'm definitely stronger than my dad now, okay? <laughs> but we're moving <laughs> but we're moving this this jagged, you know, sharp edges piece of furniture and uh I'm I had to put it down. Hold on. I put it down. It hurts my hands. My hands are hurting. And I had to go put gloves on. Meanwhile, my dad's barehanded, like holding it, and it's not hurting him. Mm -hmm. It's because he's handled rough objects with the work that he's done since he was a child. Uh, yeah. So it's like he's got natural gloves on, right? Where does that come from? It's adapting. Yeah. So think of all the different ways you could train your body to adapt. Again, the dose makes the poison. Just like with exercise, it must be appropriate. So if you never use a sauna, for example, and you go in there and you just push yourself to failure. Yeah, for an hour. You're going to feel like dog shit yeah. for three days. You're probably going to go too far. Just like if you never work out and you go to the gym and beat yourself up. The dose makes the poison. It's got to be appropriate. Allow your body to slowly adapt. So maybe it's like, okay, when I drive to work, it's cold. Uh, instead of putting the heater on, well, Wim Hof I won't had, put the heater on. Wim Hof had a really cool, I forget uh, what he called it or whatever, but like, I mean, they literally started like, you know, 30 seconds at the end of your shower. That's yeah for a week, right. and then the next week go to one minute of just a, the, of it, and then two minutes of it at the end of your shower. Then get to the place where you can go go plunge into the water for a minute to two minutes, and then you just keep working your way up like that. I mean, I, that was me. Like I remember the. I mean, I remember the first time we did it with Justin, and Justin kicked our asses because he had the Wim Hof training. Yeah, and it was like it well, seemed. I was waiting for the fat joke. <laughs> yeah. well, isn't fat an insulator? <laughs> yeah. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Continue. That's the, that's the real he, he advantage. Cut me off of the pass. I, I mean, he smoked us when we did that, <laughs> yeah, right? And it was so hard for me to do it. I just I had no concept of what I what I needed to do. I was just trying to bear it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where I got to a place now where man, oh, I you're could, sitting there for minutes. Oh, I could sit in there. I get out just because like oh, it's been five minutes. I don't need to stay in here any oh, longer. God. Like so, it's gotten to that place where. I can do it that comfortably. In you know in what's interesting about that? I mean, kind of a side, connected side topic. It is interesting how like genetics play a role in pretty much everything, right? So you may genetically be stronger at an exercise or maybe more prone to endurance versus strength or speed or whatever. Um, I uh, do much better with heat than I do with cold. No. Mm. Like I can go in a sauna and I could do very well no. right out the gates. Cold is something I should train. Uh, because I suck at it. I am not good with cold. Yeah. Not at all. Like, I mean, it's like anything else. You I know need to that. train it. It's right. like the opposite. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, you're be, like that yeah. with heat, right? Yeah. It sucks. The thing about the cold that I find interesting is that it sucks every time. 
There's, it has never gotten to the place where I like. I go it's right before easy. I get in. I go like, oh, this is no big deal. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah. it's never easy. Yeah, either. every time I do, every time I do it, I'm like, motherfucker. This, is, and then, the, oh. and then it's that, that, that from the second you get in to that, I don't know. I'd say about a minute to where I, I settle in, and then I'm like, okay, I'm cool now. But I mean, that first one minute is as equally hard as it was day one as it is, yeah. you know, yeah. a year later. It's like squats. It is, yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's, it's interesting how that is. But you get better at the the dealing with it and, like, calming yourself, which is obviously part of what, what you're training, right? Mm -hmm. You're training that ability. that that's It's always a hard stress, but what you get better at is – is calming down quicker and then so here's why i want to go with that right because uh people listening just like when we talk about exercise people will be like oh crap okay well that means i gotta because i'm doing nothing now that means i gotta go sign up at a gym i gotta devote three to four days a week in there and you know i don't know if i have the time it's a big step or whatever you can even do this i just said it earlier like i this is what i do so i do i finish with cold with my shower i'm gonna take a shower anyway right so Finished with 30 seconds to a minute with cold. That's one way. Another thing is, like I said, you get in the car and it's cold in the morning, open the sunroof. Just let yourself be cold as you drive to work. Or if it's hot, sit in the heat as you drive home. Like there's little things that we could do that you can do on a daily basis, I think, that will train that muscle to acclimate that mm. don't require you to go get a cold plunge or a sauna. I think those are great. And I think especially once you get to a certain level, then you want to, just like with with exercise, like, oh, you're not doing anything now? Why don't you do 15 minutes of some air squats, some push-ups, some you know pull-ups, and that'll work for a while. And then, yeah, at some point, you're going to need to get some free weights. I'm going to go ahead and make this easy and sum it all up for everybody. There's a healthy way to expose yourself. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. You know, this, I this, always, this, this starts- Are the cameras above the waist? I now? mean, this starts, this was like, this was an, uh, like one of the early kind of, uh, I don't want to say fight because we didn't fight over, but the like push-pull between Katrina and I with Max- because we were this way with our babies right out the gates. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. You know, like you should show our videos of children in Russia. I know. Well, I love how they put them I, out. It didn't in the matter snow how many examples. And, and them and, it's yeah. crazy. It didn't matter how many examples I gave her and all the science I tried to su to support my argument. It's like it's so funny. Like it's her baby, right? So mm -hmm. it's just like she's so defensive about yeah. like not allowing. I'm like, listen, it is so good for him yeah. to be barefoot yeah. and it cold out there and like just a t shirt and shorts. Yeah. Like it's okay for him to do that. Like yeah. Especially his body if he can handle it, and and what's and wild is like he'll you'll see him, he's fine. Yeah, like he he would tell you if he's like really cold, but he's like out there Dude, playing. Even him. infants, you've seen um, those videos, and I've actually uh, I'm trying to think if we did this or not, where you put a baby in in the pool and you just uh, and then they naturally just turn themselves up. So oh, I've seen that. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. They're well, they give birth in, in uh, water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like that makes you like crazy nervous. Like it's oh my god. You like know, Northern European drown. countries. Um, those, there's videos you can look them up. I don't know if what country Sweden, Norway, maybe. The moms. Well, first off, the societies and culture there is so low crime or whatever. So that's just consider that right. But moms will go inside shopping. I mean, it's snowing. It's freezing outside, cold, and you see all these strollers parked outside the stores. With the babies in the stroller, they have blankets and stuff, but they're sleeping. Wow! In outside, really? in, in like you know, <laughs> wow. fifteen degree weather. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. You know, and then and then so Jessica, she understands, she knows Russian culture to a certain extent. Her ex husband was from Ukraine, and then uh, she learned Russian. And she, you know, when she traveled to circus, there was a lot of uh, people from Eastern Bloc nations. She said it's customary to when you bathe your baby to finish with a cold rinse, mm. pure mm -hmm. cold. Mm -hmm. How many people would do that to their baby? I, Kyle's the only guy I ever knew that ever did that. Yeah. Remember Kyle? Mm -hmm. Kingsbury? Oh, yeah. Remember his son? They never had, used warm he water. He had never felt warm water. Yeah. I remember, yeah. the, remember here in the winter, he sounds, would be- He's going to go to therapy when he's older. Yeah, I know. My exactly. parents- I know. You tell- Oh, wow. Look at that. There's that <laughs> See, look at that. That's uh, funny. Where is that? Norway. Yeah. Norway. Would do you would you I mean, ever see a mom it, here? Man. Forget about the crime part, because that's like- that's like. Uh, be a kidnapper's wet dream yeah. but you could you leave your kid outside like that in the snow you get the cops that's called on so him. nuts yeah yeah Isn't that wild like, yeah it's wild well, show they, the russian one doug yeah. like what uh i mean that's crazy Russian that, kids that in school baby documentary where um they they showed like how every culture like kind of like deals with like that one that i think it was in the himalayas where they would just like tied that baby uh to to one of the, like the beds and they just left like all day what 
you don't remember that? The, no. Oh that's, yeah, that's they're far. like playing with rocks and <laughs> dude, it's it's just I, it just bit, made an example of like how resilient these like little kids are. Oh, I, I just think it's interesting how much we avoid hard. Like it's it, that's all this stems from is because we we have the luxury to bring the the child in, turn the heater on, or or turn it to, to temperature down. Look at that so Siberian I, school. Look what they do. Scroll up, Doug. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right there on the left, the bottom left. Yeah, they're pouring water over their heads. They're outside. It's <laughs> it's snow. Okay, yeah, yeah. ice. This is Siberia. This is not like oh you know a little bit of you know a little dust of snow. It's cold over there. Yeah. This is it, it, like break. This is like recess. Yeah. Not only the outside, they're outside in speedos. Not only the outside in speedos in the snow, they have buckets of water they're pouring over themselves. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what would happen if you did that? To you know. Kids now, here? so okay. Now, since you bring this up, <laughs> what would be really interesting? They all die. Probably. What would be yeah, really interesting, Sal, is to break. Look up like uh, the kid, their immune system. Oh, how often know. they get sick. They already you know, show it. Huh? They already show it. They do. Uh huh. So show that. I want to see the. They already show it. Because to me, that is what would be really interesting about this. So okay, obviously that's crazy that they do that. Now the next question is how much healthier are the those kids in comparison to like let's say oh, uh western I'll nations? show you one. Look up the cancer rates uh and heart disease rates among the Amish. Look up that. They live uh the way that we lived, I don't know, 100 something years ago. Yeah. You know the cancer rates are like nothing. That low? Like really really low? Oh my almost non-existent. Why does that so that's so weird to me, right? Like cancer is one of the most talked about things, yeah. right? Every everybody knows somebody who who's been been hit with it. Like if we have a group of people, okay, and there's a large enough group, it's not like a pool of a hundred people, and you're yeah, like, it's a whole oh. community, yeah, a whole community of people that have the lowest rates of cancer. Mm -hmm. Why is that not like a constant conversation around like there's so, like it's so sad, right? It's so sad that why would we reject we would reject we would reject them because they live a way that maybe one of yeah, us. Yeah, but why would they? They don't like imagine all the companies and products that I know. That's my point, though, like Sal. <laughs> that's a, it's so sad that because because you reject the way they live that you you wouldn't at least like peer investi into it, yeah, investigate. It, yeah, investigate. What are some of the potential things that are now? I know. I obviously there's a lot of things. There's great community there. Yeah. They probably low they're processed active, food diets. Yeah. They're, they're all active. Purpose. They're yeah. lean. They don't yeah. smoke. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I mean. Yeah. You know. Ironically, it's a lot of the stuff that we talk about the blue zone stuff, right? Yeah, totally. A lot. Of the, a lot of the things that are. What yeah. does it say, Doug? It's a very strong. Yeah. Community. So the overall cancer rate for the Amish is 390 compared to 647 in the population at large. Yeah, so, so look at that. What does half. that mean? 390. I don't know what that means, but it's about half anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just really, really low. Scroll down more, Doug. See if there's more articles. By the way, oh, they, see that's look, they connected to cigarettes. Look at that. No, it says in that study that doesn't explain all of it. Um, scroll down, Doug, to. Uh, you know what the problem, by the way, is? Is that they'll also put out articles mm. that will try to counter this kind of stuff because they don't use technology. Yeah. They don't use plastic. Yeah, they're terrible like consumers. <laughs> they're like the worst yeah. consumers in the world. Yeah, they're you know? out of that whole race. <laughs> Which is, okay. They make their own so shit. So obviously that's why we did, it's not discussed. Yeah. Right? I'm saying so it's like every every lobbyist group in the, in the world is yeah, not- They make it, all their own stuff. What does that yeah. say, Doug? <laughs> The age-adjusted cancer incident rate for all cancers among the Amish was 60% of age-adjusted adult rate in Ohio. I don't know what that is compared to other people. I mean, so they're talking about the Ohio Amish. Yeah. So, uh, by, we, by the way, did I tell you guys that uh, we bought a piece of furniture from an Amish community? Oh, uh, no. yeah. Was that like, the mantle? Did you like, go there and do it? No. Where we, I don't think there's any Amish communities around yes, here. Yes, there is. Here? Amish here? I don't think so. Yes. I, I mean, think most of the Amish are in Ohio coasts. and Pennsylvania. You, can, you guys are can buy stuff from You're tripping. Look There's up Amish, Amish in California. Everywhere. I don't yes. think so. Well, it yeah. might be true. Of course there is. Come on, you They guys. listen to Mind Pump right now? They probably they have, do. They have, a, they have a, a black market Are they allowed radio? to? Are they allowed to listen <laughs> to the, the- Black market cell phone? <laughs> Just blast it in their in horse buggy. There is one, actually. You're right. Of course. Where? Let me find out. So it's Wait, not Doug, silly. Why, Adam, so why do you know this, Adam? Dang. Well, I mean, it's not. It was actually just a, a educated guess. Like, oh, really? To think that there's not a type of person in California. I thought maybe because you guys went to so many churches. Holy Tamale, Salinas. Oh, oh look right, right up the street of all in our backyard, <laughs> fucking dude. guy. Makes my point even better, bro. Wow. <laughs> right up the road, you could have got go it. Hang out. You probably paid hella money for shipping. Could have yeah. drove around the corner. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. No, I don't know where we got it from. Oh, get some butter. No, Jessica so went. How do you know it's Amish? Jessica. Because let me tell they have, you, they have certain tags. No, no. <laughs> Jessica went on. Oh, I Very can't remember the site. Beards. Hey, tell me about this. What's that site? Hold on a second. What's what? that site you go on where people can sell real deal or like? No. Uh, anyway, she went on there. eBay or something. She like went that. on there, and it was literally uh, Amish 
made, you know, from Amish community, whatever. They sent it to us, and you can see it's handmade. Yeah. You can see that's the, the mantle, right? The mantle, yeah, so you can carved. see where they Brother carve out. Ezekiel was just, you know, no, no. So where they carve, there's a there's outside. a there's a groove in it that's carved out because you have to put a two by four in there to put up against the wall yeah. or whatever. You can see that it was done by hand. That's with cool. Like, yeah, right. So uh, tell me more about this. This is great. There's a community in Salinas. That's like, yeah. It sounds like what? a small community, and they were a break off community from one up in Oregon. Okay. So uh, remember, uh, I told you guys we should start our own. Uh, I mean, the only maybe we can is, join. I, well, the only difference are you allowed, is, are you allowed to go? Can we? Can you, if you're dude, not Amish, are you allowed to go like hang out for the I day? Wanna, I would love to interview. Someone. I want to so watch would I. and build. Uh, you ever seen those videos where they build a, a house? House and what? Well, we have to have a, we have to have an Amish person who listens, who knows to, had to get us connected in there. I would love to talk to somebody there. Uh, maybe if we start putting the podcast on, uh, I don't know. Like what? Like horse coat newspaper. What, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Just have a megaphone, like yeah. <laughs> we drive our Outside. drive a car through. Yeah, you know, like snake oil salesman. Yeah, I mean, so I guess I guess fifty percent less is is a pretty significant yeah. number. Yeah, right? but even that data, I've so I've read articles. Okay, because remember we went to. Um, where we go, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and there were the Mennonites there. Mennonites. And so I just for a little for like an hour that night, I was just reading about because I was so fascinated, right? And um, <laughs> so and example. even that is bloated that statistic. So I'll read articles and like, no, no, no. They even try to. They even include people who used to be Amish, yeah, who then live in modern societies and stuff like that. See, this is why I would like to, to talk to somebody who's there because they might go like, yeah, we have nobody. Who has cancer? Like, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You hear from them, and you're like, you, if they include that, someone who was Amish and then they're no longer, yeah. or identify as Amish, but then they don't live in an Amish community or some shit, like, then those people get wrapped into that category. That'd be really was interesting. It Freud, like, like one of his descendants that really went all in on the consumerism and the psychology behind that, and then really pumped that. There's into a great Western culture. There's oh. a great documentary on I'm that. I'm pretty sure that's true. Interesting. Oh, somebody, yeah, but it, it just pervaded everything after, like, they came up with this entire way of like shuttling people into consumerism. So much of there, what we think is you're uh, talking about a, a very uh, there's a, a you guys talked about this I think a yeah. long time ago I, I, I brought think it even up. the Netflix like a long the, time ago. In fact, I would like to watch that again. It was such a good. It was such a. It was like it was definitely like the how much they impacted our beliefs and stuff. Yeah, when okay. it when it with the origin of it and the you know it's a it big was one? very orchestrated. Yes, it's not like an accident that people just like Edward Bernays. So, there you go. That's yep. it. That yeah, I think so. He was a, a relative of Freud, and yeah. he was uh, very instrumental in the advertising movement. Yes, yep. it is about him, and it is so. Yeah, you watch that same documentary. Yeah, yes, I think. such a good. I, you got to find the name of that, Andrew. Yeah, hunt it down because I think that I remember a, we all watched. I want to make that the shout out today because that's a much. I think that's like one of those things that everybody should watch. It was mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. Because like it's just you you see it like that's the root of it all. Really, I mean, like you see like how all of our hustle to to innovate and i mean the good and the bad right don't but, uh, you don't you i mean i find it really kind of crazy too like we have like r quietly like got so much better at advertising to people and stuff like that like it's wild to me like oh how much you get like targeted now with stuff not just you, targeted what you see what you watch what you consume yes, yeah it's actually like i do want becomes that. your well not just that <laughs> like, hey, it becomes your reality look yeah. i'll take it back to our space if it, people think is that it, I believe so. The century of self, yes, it is. Century of the self. No, that's two thousand five, bro. I think this is older. No, nope. I think this is older than. I'm that. almost positive that's what it was. Yeah, it's from remember. a two thousand two British uh, documentary. Yes. Oh, okay, that yeah. is it. Because it yeah. was, it was like a BBC. Yeah, it was, it was, it was originally on BBC. Yeah. So the one I watched BBC? was on BBC. I'm pretty sure this is the the right one. The Google BBC. Yeah. I. <laughs> <laughs> No. Not on his computer. So, uh, <laughs> his Google <laughs> so tarnished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't do that to him. I, uh, so much of everything we see becomes our how we compare our reality, what we believe is important, what we believe is not important. So you would think because of the advertising that buying shit is what makes you important. Obviously not. That's not what makes you happy. Uh, in fitness, you know, people think supplements are so impactful when they're at the bottom of the list of the things that impact you. So it's just, it just, it just is, man. I, I get, what's the answer to it? Not consume, I guess. Yeah. Like not consume stuff that's constantly trying to sell you shit. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's some of those like minimalist kind of yeah. um, strategies and people like kind of get into that molecular homes and, 
you know, they try to kind of like get off off the grid a little bit and and try to figure out the self sustainability approach. And I, I don't know. I apparently that's that's like on the rise. Well, like crazy people trying to figure out their own farm. Dude, the you know crazy part. The crazy part though is in our our entire economy is is based on the fact that that addiction will continue to grow. I know. Yeah. And it would collapse if it doesn't. That's the fucking unfortunate part about uh -huh. all that. Think about that. Like that's the shittiest part about this is that we were so leveraged in that in yes. that direction that it and we we need we put it all to our eggs there right we need it to continue to to grow and expand and get worse in that direction but yet that's the opposite direction we probably should well, go for well, corporations you know like you can go public it's like the expectation that you're always going to have growth is like if you don't then you're dying you know you can't no. ever like well have, let me let me ask you this like what how, how many companies do you think would go to business if everybody became really healthy a lot. A lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of companies would be gone yeah, yeah. if people were just like genuinely. Well, healthy. I mean, it, what it'd be, how about this? This would be an interesting stat to see how many things are literally created to distract us, like to, from reality. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> think about that. Like, how many? The biggest companies like in the world. 80% of things. Yeah. Yeah. 80% of what, like, it'd be, it'd be, I bet it's a number like that. I bet it's a really high number. It's gotten so bad, okay, that when we, we were kids, it was already bad. We were already in the middle. I mean, we were at the, we were already coming close to the peak in the 90s. Yeah. But in the 90s, I at least remember standing in line <laughs> and just waiting. Yeah. Remember? Or, you know, it, well, at the bus stop. Nobody does that now. Yeah. You're on your phone. Well, even commercials, like we were going through uh, yesterday and like you were doing like a quiz with- uh, The jingles? It wasn't commercials. It was like the beginning to- yeah, The jingles. To jingles oh, or yeah. like, you know, the beginning to like TV shows. I remember and it's them like, all. dude, that's a lost thing. It, it's completely evolved and, and moved into like, there's no like real commercial because of streaming, but now they do it in such a sneaky Bro, well, way. Well, that's, you know, what's crazy is that you, they don't need that anymore. They don't need it. No. Like, it's so you needed like effective. a jingle to get someone to remember before. It's like, oh, don't worry. We're going to follow you Dude, around all day. That shit's burned <laughs> in my brain. Know, brain I don't forever, need you to remember. Yeah, but I'll you, remind you, you all know what? day. This is why we don't let, so we don't let our kids, uh, our little ones look at, like Aurelius, we don't let them look at YouTube. Either do we. If you YouTube, watch it, YouTube, if YouTube we put a TV banned. on, we YouTube put a, is banned in my yeah, house. Because it Max just keeps going and, well, going and going and going. I'll try and show him a video. Like we're trying to learn about polar bears or something. I'll try and show him. If I give him the phone, even if I don't, he reaches over to click on the recommended one. Mm -hmm. And if I let him, he goes from one to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Three-year-old. Yeah. I mean, and you're training that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's a like, there's, those animal studies where they give him like a sugar. There's even been things where it, I uh, accidentally like let Max on it and then like instantly we're screwed. Like I, I we were just the other day this happened. You try to and me, pull right? it away. And then, oh my so because we don't we don't allow YouTube either. Uh, and I would he's so he's not using a Mario big time right now. Right. So he's like every time uh, like he wants to search a new Mario character. And so I get on a Google search yeah. uh, like Lemmy or, you know, Lenny or whatever, Larry or whatever their names are. Right. And I, I search the Mario character. And then a lot of times there'll be like a video of the character yeah. like that. And so he'll want to watch it and he'll sit in my lap and I'll let him watch it. And the other day I'm like, he's doing that while I'm talking to him. What I didn't realize was the Google search, obviously Google is, owns YouTube. So the video was platformed on YouTube. Yeah. So just auto put him on YouTube, me not even realizing then all of a sudden it kicks to the next video. Still, I'm not really paying attention that the next, because the next video still is close enough to be just like that, that up video that I'm just letting him kind of watch it while I'm talking to Katrina. And then like the third video that he gets to is a kid playing the game where that character is oh, in it. He's already three, four videos deep. Not only that, and the kid's fucking cussing. Oh, like, oh like that's what? how that's how it got me wow. uh, it, that's how it got my attention was because all of a sudden i heard like the f-bomb dropped and i'm like whoa dude how did we get here <laughs> like get that. that like literally like that like it, i was showing him an innocent mario character on 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 it did not realize he was on youtube because like, katrina and i have already made that agreement that no youtube yeah. so i was just and me brain fart like i was just showing him uh, a video of the mario character not thinking anything of it goes to another one it's like oh no big deal and still not thinking about it then all of a sudden it's a kid playing it still didn't think much of it right yet and then all of a sudden you hear the kid oh motherfucker dude. and i'm like whoa I dude am, like whoa. i'm convinced do you guys crazy remember, do you guys yeah. remember when they found those videos on youtube of like spider-man oh, Spider yes. and princess you know whatever from uh, frozen inappropriate sexual things yeah yeah and it was like it was all connected to the kids disgusting videos. dude it's yeah fun. you know i wonder is that it's like of course like is it 
kill them with fire. That's I don't. I, I know yeah. where you guys are. What you yes. guys are alluding to, like it's a, uh, like it's like a strategic, like you okay. know, way to do it. It's hard if if it's that or it's just the algorithm feeds the more crazy or people know how the algorithm hack works. It. Yeah. And mm -hmm. put cartoon characters humping each other. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. With That's little fair. kids' voices. That's fair. And maybe right. it's a joke or in their mind or maybe. Right, right. Or, or like maybe, how malicious is it? Or really? it's a creep. You know, yeah. it's some freaking pedo. Yeah. Wild yeah, though, dude. Like, I mean, yeah. I just, I just shows you how, I mean, that's a rule in our house. <laughs> I'm aware of that, and that's how quick it can yeah. get it, get away from me. And I'm thinking because he's sitting in my lap, we're watching it, and I'm like, "Oh yeah. my god, that's so hey!" I want to ask you real quick. Uh, we're gonna get our haircut on Monday. We're going for London on Friday. We should have her come a little later, right? Oh, I didn't even think about yeah, that. Yeah, let's see if we can do that. And by the way, yeah, she keeps saying my hair is getting thicker. No, boom, boom. I think she's just working. Uh, <laughs> no, I think she's working a bigger tip. That's what yeah. I, think. I don't give her. A tip. Yeah, so I think I, I think Vicky's like, because like I'm gonna get a big. Tip no, this she's, guy if she she notices. Him. She notices because my you know it's been slowly you know happening. By the yeah. way, I could really tell. Is it a little darker too? I mean, you did the copper thing, right? I sake. did, but in the pet. Okay, so the Intera. Because um, mine's still getting light, dude. So the Intera hair stuff. Maybe you should use it. Yeah, actually. So my. So it's for hair loss, but it also has a peptide that improves copper absorption. Oh, okay. In the scalp, which would help with hair color, but also helps with hair growth, or mm. at least prevents it. Uh -huh. uh, so how do you guys receive this, Kay? Your wife. So this just happened, right? So Katrina's best friend uh, bought this product for her husband. So how do you how do you receive this if you're 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 the you, <laughs> if you're the guy on the other end of that? Obviously it's for that. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously it is, but like, how do you feel that your wife buys that for you? I mean, I wouldn't care if my wife. I mean, you wouldn't. <laughs> no. You would make it would no. make you feel like oh, it's not man. like she gave him boner pills like that'd be another. Well, then, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's kind of in the same category. Hey, I mean, honey, here I found these at the gas station. It's a penis pump. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of like you know me, I don't care, right? So I'm like whatever about about the, the bald and, and stuff like that. Other some a lot of men that's like fucking crazy. Like that yeah, really it, it is a very yeah, bro. Sore spot. Yeah, yeah, that's a really sensitive spot. I I didn't realize it until I shaved my head and then people started asking questions. And then I, I like that became like for a hot minute there. Like the top DM, like how do you handle to it? To me, that's like the, that's the answer. It's like, yes, bro, it's easy. That's a that's a big deal. I always, the way I always looked at it, I is, bet you could look that up. But I bet you what what are I men's top insecurities? Easy. I bet you balding I'm is, sure is, that's is like one a of number them. one. Yeah, you're right. Or yeah. if not a top three. Yeah, you're right. So yeah. it's interesting. What is it? Uh, male pattern baldness is boom look top there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I was I was really uh, I, I guess I never really thought about it. Uh, maybe I knew I kind of always knew I was going Penis that direction with my dad too, and my so. grandfather <laughs> and stuff. But the um, the amount of DMs that I got I around that was really fascinating. I don't know. Look, guys, fellas, uh, you know, because obviously you're insecure because you don't feel as attractive. Lift weights and make money. I think those are the two most important <laughs> things you can do, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the move. You're gonna outperform the dude with a full head of hair. Yeah, who doesn't all make day. as much. Who doesn't all make, day? That's such know, a good. Hey, so that's such dude, a good point. Perfect. It is. Yeah. It's like, okay, I can't control that, whatever. But you can lift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you can work hard. Honestly, yeah. that's such the answer to and you so can, many things. If you're going through a breakup, like even I was talking to Ethan about this because he's kind of going through this rough patch where like his friends are clicking up with other friends. Oh. And he's just sort of like- It's always you know, funny with kids. That yeah, happens, dude. Right? Like, it, And I think it's because, so they had this like uh, sort of traumatic experience because like his other friends, they were like mountain biking and one of his friends like broke his leg and they oh, had shit. to take him to ER and then- Anyways, it was like a friend that wasn't really in the group, and then they got real tight because of that, and then they just sort of started to, like, snub him out a little bit, and so they're making all these plans without it. I'm like, dude, you know, forget him. Like, just, you know, you, you be the kid that lifts weights and, and <laughs> yeah. you know, and gets after it, gets strong, like, and, yeah. um, you know, gets confident through that and then and hangs out with the girls, you yeah. know, like, now's your time to shine and, like, you know. Uh, at least like, cause that's an awkward thing for a lot, that age group to just to be able to interact with the opposite yes. sex. And I'm so like, you mean, you're not going to call the parents read, and the kids and tell them, read, to make their lift no. weights. <laughs> hey, read, lift weights, make money. It'll <laughs> trump. It'll oh, trump. There it the is. hair loss in the world. There it is. Yeah. yeah. You could lose. Yeah. hundred percent. It's yeah. like, what was that? There was a meme. It was like a, a guy goes to a gym and he's like, which machine? It's going to get me the most uh, attention from women. And then the trainer goes, oh, this one over here. Yeah, it was the ATM machine. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I've never seen that. That's no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I totally jumped the, your... <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that before. Line there, that was yeah. a, what is it, a meme? It was, it was like a meme. Oh, my God. I've never yeah. seen that one before. Yeah. That's but, funny. But you <laughs> should... You know what? Now that, you're, now that you mention it, uh, uh, Justin, I want you to try the, the Intera hair, the follicle... I think, what's it called? Fo uh, Folletin. Folletin. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
because it it does uh, help with copper in the scalp, which should help with your hair. Dark. So she said the same thing. Yeah, your hair looks darker and it looks it thicker. looks a little darker for sure. I yeah. know that much. Yeah. So is, now is that why? Why is that different than you taking like a copper supplement versus like putting it on your scalp? Is it more effective to put it on your scalp? I think both of them it may will help be, it get more. I think both of them yeah. will be good, but if, but some people more receptive that way, don't necessarily have a copper deficiency, but the but they're the way that their scalp. Um, utilizes copper, I think, yeah, is, yeah. is a challenge. Hey, speaking of all this like attractive stuff, one of you had in the notes about the most attractive people in the world. Who's oh, that's an old one. Oh, you want me to really bring that up? I do. I thought that was interesting. I well, mean, it's, it's, it, I didn't it bring it up. It sounds a little biased. I'm going to guess, dude. Italy. Oh, God. Hey, Where listen. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't do. Oh, God. What did a I great know? call. You should, I should have known that. I should have known. Oh, listen to me. Z they did a huge <laughs> self-selection study. <laughs> listen to me. Study. I didn't do the study. Oh, yeah. my God. They did a huge survey. Huge survey. Of I the mean, most there's attractive people there. Don't get me wrong. Of the most who, which. You're saying that over like like Sweden? Or Brazil? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's what the study said. They asked asked people which country has the most the yeah. best looking uh, people and Italy won that's all i'm not saying i'm just saying it was a it was a study What's i think what? the stu study was conducted in italy. in italy well, right? it, was, no. it was conducted in italy <laughs> by an italian i don't think italians would have said that <laughs> honestly don't think italians would have said that really yeah i think because you're always attracted have the to a little bit of cars i know that huh? much they have the sexiest cars they well i yeah. mean yeah. that they do they're good at what they're good at yeah not good at anything else though there's well, definitely things that they're good at for sure. That's fine. I, you know, that's interesting. I, I mean, they're, I I think they're attractive, but I wouldn't have thought. I would have actually thought something like yeah, see, I, I would have thought like a Swedish, or I would have thought Brazilian. Or I would have thought. I mean, yeah. those are all oh, yeah, Brazilian. Listen, or, what's, listen yeah. here's the bottom line. I, there's good looking. I've seen good Pacific looking Pacific Islander. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, good looking people everywhere. Yeah, they're and they're there's everywhere. listen. There's some ugly fucking. I know some ugly ass Italian people. <laughs> <laughs> like really, really unattractive. So. You know, yeah. the, hey, the the whole the the whole uh, you know build your bank account to get fit. Like, there's so many examples of like super super hot chicks with like just fugly dudes, just, bro. <laughs> just fugly dudes. They literally know? don't care that they're no, ugly. Either. No, yeah. not at all. Listen, just, I I've seen this firsthand. I know people. I'm not going to say too much because this person will know who it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I, talking about you. Stop. No, no, no. I know, you know who you are, bro. I know people I've gone <laughs> out with. And they are not what you would consider attractive or fit. They're not. Rhymes with Reeve. And they don't look like, uh, they're not Quasimodo, but not, right? But within five to 10 minutes, their charisma comes out, their yeah, confidence yeah, yeah. comes out. Magnet. No, we have, I mean, absolutely we have a mutual friend like that. Can pull, can pull whatever. He's always been like that. Yeah. You've got a mouth, if you have a mouthpiece, you have swagger, you're successful, yeah. you have all the confidence. Yeah. Like, it's funny how that works, right? Like, yeah. the, the worst part of, the uh, unattractive part is the insecurity that comes with it. If you were confident about it, you'd be totally okay. Totally. But it's the insecurity that comes with it Dude, that male actually makes you less male attractive. Male comedians get so much attention yeah. because of their charisma yeah. and, their, and their humor. Most of them are hideous. And yeah. <laughs> and in and fact, most of them are basket cases. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Fucking oh, damn it. Drug addicts. Yeah. And fucking Same yeah. thing with musicians cases. too. I mean, look, yeah. at, look at like, it's half the folk singers. I mean, in general that are just like, with like supermodels and you're like, huh? Yeah. Like <laughs> how did that happen? Yeah. Just just like trolls. I mean, the bottom line is if you're healthy and you're I mean mentally healthy too, um, you're gonna be more attractive. That's the bottom line. And you you know, if you're bald, whatever. Hey, it's a, rocket, it's, man. Yeah, yeah, dude. It never really bothered me. I don't know why. No, I, I don't know why. I don't know. I, maybe it's because we were all into like athletic, you know, performance or muscle building. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always saw Bald jack dudes, and I was always like, "That's cool, Mister Clean." I, Mr. Clean? I, I was gonna say, maybe that's what it is. Maybe our era was like about like a bald guys were like a like a cool thing around yeah. there. Dude, Vin Diesel, remember like Bruce, Bruce Willis? Bruce, yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe because we grew up in the Bruce Willis Vin Diesel era, that's yeah, why yeah, it's yeah. like that. If yeah. we weren't, maybe it wouldn't be like that. Because think of it like a Stone like, Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. You know, that's, maybe that's why you I don't never, you don't want to be fat and bald. I think that's yeah. a bad idea. It's, it's it almost <laughs> looks weird, like a Hogan or somebody like that that tries to keep like you know the bottom half. Yeah. Hey, yeah, how yeah. did he pull like, that off? Bro, that is like the worst haircut in the world. Come on, dude. How does he pull that Long off? Side it's, hair? it's the bandana, dude. They like hide the band. That was the same thing with uh, um, what's his name, the Rock of Love. Uh, oh yeah, that guy, Bret like, Hart. Bret, yeah, he would put the bandana Bret Hart, and keep Hart, the long right? hair. Not Bret Hart. Oh, you're talking it? about um, Bret, um, it's uh, Bret something from he, Guns and Roses, from Poison or oh, Poison. There you go. That's there what it is. Yeah, is is anybody has anybody else besides Hulk Hogan pulled that off like that? 
where he has the sides all hair along like that. Mm. <laughs> I, I think his, think his so. long blonde hair became his trademark. So he yeah, they identify it. too strongly with the the long hair. Yeah, it's so. like the Hormozy with the nose thing now. Yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, that like, people hey, look, like trademark. You have to rock that. that forever. Remember Craig, when Craig shaved his head too, sure, cut his oh, hair. Remember, that was we like all a, were like, dude, no. terrible idea. Yeah. Terrible <laughs> idea. Bro. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. He grew it back though. He was say he grew it back. Yeah, you're the long locks warrior. Dude, I gotta tell you, you want to hear something crazy? I just read this today. Let's hear it. Yeah, so. What's what's what do you? <laughs> a guy got a speeding ticket uh, in Georgia. Okay, he was going um, ninety and a fifty-five. How okay. much do you think his speeding ticket cost him? Ninety and a fifty-five. Yeah, in how much, Georgia. In, in Georgia, G so ninety miles an hour, fifty-five mile an hour speed. Well, limit. once you go Four over twenty bucks. miles, you you now are in a new category of reckless and endangerment. So they can hit you with that. Also, it's called a super speeder ticket. Yeah, so it goes up to like four or five hundred bucks. One point four million dollars. Well, that's not what. Yeah, right. No. It's real. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Come on, Sal. No, it is real. Now I'll explain to you why. Yeah, because they made a law, and I guess there's you a can't just bankrupt people like that. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. one point four. Yeah, million dollars. yeah. That's <laughs> like, like can't be right. I dude. can't pay this. Like, yeah. what, what <laughs> is it like <laughs> in proportion what to the car now? you're driving? It's a Bugatti, so no. you can get hit for that. No. So what it is is there's there's a law that'd be fucked up if that's how it when works. you go 20 mile an hour over the speed yes, limit yes. or more, it's I'm called a super speeder ticket. Yeah, yeah. And they said no, it is not a typo. They said when in the city of Savannah, apparently there's like a, a mathematical calculation that happens, and this is what happens. Oh, sorry, over 35 miles an hour speed limit, you get what's called a placeholder. <laughs> Dang. The placeholder is nine hundred and ninety nine thousand uh, dollars, and then you add other fees. It got to one point four. Now, what you do is you have to show up to court, and then the judge then assigns you the the amount. So, I think it's a way for them to get your ass to come to court. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, but that's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely showing. So up. the dude got. So the guy, I'm sure he had a heart attack. He got the thing. And he's like one point four, and then he called them like, no, it's that's 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 the, that's the amount. That's insane. Yeah, like, what the you fuck? have to show up to court, and then, to the, court. then the judge makes you. The, Interesting. Why? Like, what do you think that is? To I it mean, says okay. So it says here the system automatically puts in nine ninety nine nine ninety nine as the base amount plus other costs, and since the only way to resolve the ticket is to appear in court. I think it's for them to make you show up, which yeah. is effective. So, <laughs> so according to this, the judge sets the amount and it can't exceed $1,000. That's when he goes to the court. Once he goes to court. Yeah. but It cannot exceed $1,000. Yeah. So that's weird, huh? Yeah. It's weird. Obviously, they want people in court. But they can't like apply that if you don't show up to yeah, court, Yeah, what are you going right? to do then? Go to jail? Yeah. Yeah, literally bankrupt somebody for for a speeding ticket, dude. Yeah. That would be crazy. You know that there are a little crazy. There are some countries. Maybe you can look this up, Doug. That charge you the the fine is in yeah. proportion to the to the amount speed. No, to the amount you make. That Finland, way. home of the one hundred thousand dollars speeding ticket. That's yeah. weird. Dude. Yeah, they determine it based on your income. So how does it work? Huh. Tell me. How does it? So does it give you the percentage? Like, yeah, yeah. Like if, depending on how much you make. See, that's that would man. That's I mean, look. 90% of people would probably like that, right? If it was a percentage. I mean, but there's well, yeah, because like all the people that don't make a lot of money would want that for sure. But well, it's just, it's and the only people that wouldn't would be the people that make a lot of money. Now, what happens if you don't make any money? You just get for free? I don't know. Hmm. What does that say up there? Nokia executive, as it was a Nokia executive who got fined $100,000 for going 45 and a 30. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. That escalated. I'd be so yeah, I'd be so mad too. That, that's, I'd, I'd, flee I'd be country. taking Ubers from, for, you know. Does it tell you yeah. the percentage? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, but yeah, I think this is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it's overstepping by the government, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like yeah. it's just it's theft, basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you make a lot more, more take ways more to money. grab more. Yeah. yeah. I I agree. I think it's terrible. What would be better is if you could bribe somebody out of a ticket when they pay for <laughs> yeah. That would be better. I'll give you fifty thousand dollars. All right. <laughs> you know what makes sense to me? I never understood this. Everybody's gonna get mad at me, but uh, this is okay. just a fact. They don't want you to drive fast, okay? It, the faster you drive, obviously, I don't have to argue this. You're more likely to kill someone, more likely to an argument, uh, excuse me, an accident. Why don't all cars have a speed limiter to the speed limit? Why do cars go past? What is the purpose of cars going past 65 oh, miles an hour? What well, an awful, besides the consumer. Oh, what an awful, yeah, what an awful world to live in. I understand right, no, that, right? Oh. I get that. But why How are you why do they market these cars? Why you do they make them? This is why. Because both sides agree on that. The, yeah. the side that's writing the tickets and making all the money. They're not going to make no money. No they're more. not going to make any money. Yeah. And the side who wants to drive and take the risk of getting caught, both parties agree on that. 
both parties want you to be able to go faster than what the speed yeah. limit is. That's why. That's the there's a whole economy around that. Yeah. Yeah, like that's the beginning of the month, the end of the month or, or whenever like that one window is where they have Everybody's to like getting tickets. Yeah, everybody. Imagine the black market too that would happen like of for to make cars go over that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just telling you the think about how logical that is. It would yeah. be so logical. The fastest you could go in America Let's say seventy-five miles an hour. Maybe oh, there's a highway in somewhere. that communist society. Dude. No way. No <laughs> way. This America. Sucks. Did you ever watch that video? It was from the early eighties. I wish we had an autobahn. That's what I wish. Yeah. So do I. Oh, yeah. You ever watch? There's a video from the early eighties. I hope we can find it. Where they're interviewing people because they're about to pass. So this is like nineteen eighty-one. They're about to pass a, a drunk drive, a, a, like you can't drink and drive law, and they're interviewing people in this town. And the fucking funniest shit. Like people are like. <laughs> I thought this was America. I can't even drink a beer on the way <laughs> oh, home anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen that video. They're all pissed off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the commies are taking yeah. over. I'm like, I was laughing so hard. I'm like, yeah. I guess we sound they like They have like a sometimes. gun rack uh, with like. Yeah, yeah. I like to <laughs> drink a rifles. nice beer on my way home. Drink. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot squirrels on my all way right, home. All right. I got something to, to talk about because we're, we're bringing up uh, Caldera. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what you got they, for they have a page on, they have a, a, a page on their website where they highlight all the studies that they've done on um, their product. In all the studies, this is crazy. Now, these are good studies. 96% of the people who used it reported healthier looking skin. 91% reported smoother looking skin. Uh, 89% showed better radiance. 85% showed more even skin tone. 87% saw a reduction in fine lines uh, and wrinkles. This is on their website. These are real studies. So it's all awesome. yeah. I like that. It's Great product. Trip. You could go. We'll we'll put it in the show notes here. You could see this. This is a uh, thirty day study. So all, within, it's within a month. Wow. Also has to be of all the partnerships we have. Tell me, it's not the most surprising one that you would. Oh think. God, I, know. Oh, yeah. I mean, skincare? especially for dudes. There were yeah. there, I, we just had them too the other day. Like they they renewed for. You uh, know what it is next year. You know what it is mm -hmm. is their return rate is crazy. Yeah. Well, could people use it and that's it? Well, that's but, why. Look at the, what you just highlighted. 90% of people yeah. reporting so like that. I mean, there's mm. not a lot, especially like products like that. There's a lot of like gimmicky oh, yeah. skin, yeah. hair type oil. stuff. Like, yeah. like to get a 90 plus percentile of people reporting, yeah. they notice a, a positive benefit in any direction. I mean, that's pretty, it's pretty, pretty rare. That's pretty impressive. I mean, it's, every, it's almost all of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty well. All yeah. right. So the shout out then is going to be the, the century, documentary. Yeah. The Century of the Self. Uh, Edward Bernays documentary. It's on YouTube. You it's on YouTube, Dub? That's yeah. the original one. Yes. yes. That was originally yeah. on BBC. That's the one Very I was talking about. Very enlightening. highly suggest. Yeah. For sure worth watching that. One of the best on-the-go snacks I've ever had is from Paleo Valley. It's a meat stick. It's not dry. It's delicious. It's grass-fed beef. It's got great macros. Long shelf life because, again, it's packaged. It's wonderful. It tastes great. I take it with me anytime I travel to get protein. Go check it out. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 15 and get 15% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Kayla from Georgia. Hi, Kayla. How can we help you? Hey, guys, this is super cool. Um, <laughs> and I, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. So, we appreciate you. Uh, yeah. So I've been, I've been listening to you guys for a few years now. And uh, it's my favorite, definitely my favorite fitness podcast. I've tried a few others, but I keep kind of, coming back to you guys so this is this is cool awesome um so i guess into my question is i'm, I'm 32 i've been weightlifting about five years um i got relatively strong in my deadlift and ben bench press comparison like to my weight um but i always felt weak in squats basically um and i had some conf confidence issues that were related to that i'm sure um just not feeling comfortable under the bar i done okay in like a like a goblet squat or even like a zercher squat type, anything that was in front of my body. Um, I felt a little better than on loading my back. Um, on top of that, probably in the last year, my mobility's gone down quite a bit. Um, and I had thought I had some maybe bad habits, maybe it was squat form or just forms in general. So I kind of wanted to quote unquote reset, right? So I started with the MAP starter program. I kind of started over. Um, and went through that, but I don't know if that's probably the best way to do that or if there's some other options. And then how do I kind of build confidence in my squat as I'm kind of resetting and making good pattern habits and things like that? Great question. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if you were yeah. consistent all the way up until MAP starter, 
um, then what you want to do is identify the mobility issues and stability issues, focus on those and maybe do a different program. Starter, I would put her in symmetry. Yeah. So starter is really good for, is, is for beginners, right? So, uh, people without strength training experience or people who've taken a long, uh, you know, layoff, a long period off. But if you've been training this entire time, um, then there's a variety of programs I think would be good for you, but we'd want to identify what those issues are. You mentioned mobility. Maybe you can go into a little more detail, where do you feel the tightness or issues uh, with the squat? So I have tightness kind of in that, um, I guess maybe my hip flexor and into that glute. And then I feel when I have weight on my back, I feel like I can't go down all the way. Like I'm actually going to fall forward. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. In that. Can yeah. you, can you try something for me um, okay. right now? Can you do a body weight squat and then I'm going to have you change your form and we'll try something else. I don't need to see you. I just want you to try okay. it on your yeah. own. So go ahead with your feet flat. Good. Come on up now. Get up okay. on your toes. So stand uh -huh. up on your toes. Now squat with on your toes. Let me know if you, if you can go down a little further. Probably a little bit further. Okay. Yeah. It's probably ankle mobility. Then that's the issue. Okay. So uh, you might have some tightness in the ankle. So when you get down towards the bottom of a squat, uh, if the ankles lack mobility, it'll want to throw your body forward. Um, Maps Prime Pro has some really good foot and ankle mobility movements, and I would practice those daily, but you know, twice a day for ten minutes a day each time, um, and mm -hmm. that that'll make a significant impact on your mobility. And then as far as your workout plan is concerned. <clears throat> Because of your experience, um, you could do like map symmetry, Adam suggested. I think that would be a great program yeah. while working on mobility because it's all unilateral. The last phase okay. gets you back into barbell squats. So by the time you get to the last phase, if you've been working on ankle mobility along with the unilateral training from, from symmetry, you should notice a significant improvement in your squat. Okay. And that would help. Because I wonder, I wonder if some of ability had to do with imbalances and symmetry. I guess would fix that yep. as well if mm -hmm. that is the case. That's why Adam said that yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think I think we're all going to agree on this. I also think I want to point out too, and I love that you shared this. Is that it's actually not uncommon to be like that in a squat too. It's I mean, it's. Uh, Putting weight on your back, it, it, it's like the that of all the exercises, it's like it's crushing you. So there's mm -hmm. definitely a, a, a mental block that a lot of us have when we get into a, a movement like that, where not only do you lack maybe some ankle mobility, but in addition to that, you have this this weight that's bearing on the back of your shoulders. It's kind of scary on how do I get out of this if it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's a couple of things that are at play here, and I think that. Working on the ankle mobility and doing symmetry uh, at, while you're doing the, the Maps Prime Pro, I think you're going to see a big difference uh, in that by itself. So that's where I'd go to. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> There's definitely a little bit of nuance there too. Like if, um, you know, the position of the bar on your back, you might want to kind of play around with as well. Uh, I know that's a very common one leaning forward and that's get, like feeling like, you know, your body's kind of like uh, going down into that kind of forward position so the ankles will help kind of address that but also too like to to readjust where the bar placement is on your back that's a good point just center your um yeah your 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 balance there so i think we did i don't know if we've done a video i'm pretty sure we have on a low bar squat have we t have we taught the difference between a low bar and a high bar squat um, on the thing on youtube i'm sure we have i think yeah. we have i'm pretty sure you can go to mind pump tv and look up low bar squat and okay. Justin's right. When you have a tendency to want to fall forward a little bit, um, and granted, I think that what Salfer said with the ankle mobility, that's addressing the root cause. So that's definitely, but what Justin's suggesting is while you're also doing that, you could also play with the bar, bar placement, which will help with that feeling mm -hmm. of falling over. In fact, I have a, I had a very similar issue because I had ankle mobility issues. And so I used to only be able to low bar squat uh, for that reason, I, I, because I had a tendency to kind of fall forward a little bit. So I'd put the bar lower on my back, which does allow you to come forward a little bit and still be comfortable. And then while I worked on my ankle mobility, I got to a place where I could start to put the bar higher right. up on my track. It might require a little more shoulder mobility to get it a little bit lower too. So um, okay, yeah, 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 just, just okay. kind of try it out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think that'll be those will both uh, help. Yeah. Now, do you have either one of those, Prime Pro or Symmetry? Prime, I think I don't know that I have Prime Pro. Okay, and I bought the bundle with the Map Starter that had Maps 15 
Okay. Um, it was the bundle a few months ago. Awesome. You guys really well, like. we'll send you Symmetry and Prime Pro, so you'll you'll have both of them. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I I appreciate you guys yeah. very much. This helps me. I, I did feel when I started Starter, I was kind of like, oh, did I kind of I felt bored, maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that kind of explains. Well, you, yeah. You've been working out for <laughs> yeah, a while, yeah. so of yeah, course you kind of know what you're doing. That's so. that would be a good program for you if let's say you had you got injured and you couldn't work out for a while or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then I would jump back in. Yeah, or you just took a break for yeah, say two or three you know, months. As, as far as confidence with squats is concerned, uh, as this starts to improve for you, um, and you start to address those issues, the best way to get uh, proficient and confident in a lift is to practice it often. And so yeah. squatting, you can squat very often. You would have to modify the intensity. So once you get to the point where you feel good and like, mm -hmm. okay, I think I addressed the issue. Everything feels balanced now. You can squat three, four days a week. You just, you know, maybe one or two of those is kind of hard. The other, the others are just easy, just going through the motion and just perfecting the technique. Uh, nothing will get you confident like pr frequent practicing of a movement. I mean, if yes. if we were to keep going in this direction in the conversation, I would actually, after you go through Prime, Pro, and Symmetry and work on Angle I think actually max, Maps Power Lift, if you want to get proficient at the squat, oh, yeah, that's, that's probably the best program. The most practice strong. you'll get. For yeah, sure. you'll get a lot of practice. In it. So if you, if the goal is like, hey, I, 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 I want to get good at the squat, that uh, sounds like you're really good at the deadlift, bench press, and the other exercises, if you want to get really proficient at it, then I think Symmetry and Prime Pro work on that really good. After you get done with Symmetry, then Powerlift would be a fun program That's to follow. It. And then don't listen to any other fitness podcasts again. Stay with <laughs> yeah. us. Yeah. A, a I'm, I'm sticking. Yeah. All right. We got, we got you. <laughs> They're boring and wrong. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks for calling us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you have, it. You have a good Appreciate one. it. No problem. Yeah, I like her. I was going to make a comment about the five minute podcast. <laughs> uh, like, why did you leave in the first place? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which one of us said something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're always like, let me see what's oh, that sucks. Let me yeah. come back. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's uh, the that, that test that I did with her, who did that to us? Was it Brink? Dr. Brink, yeah. I, it was such a like mind blowing. You know, I know. at that point, I'd been training people for two decades, right? Yeah. And he's like, squat. And then I did. And then he goes, all right, now stand on this. He put something under my heels. Yeah. And he goes, now squat. And I went all the way down. Yeah. He goes, it's your ankles. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Of course, <laughs> it increased it's a, like 20 degrees oh, range shit. of motion. Yeah. yeah just made, like that. Made yeah. a huge, uh, huge difference. I mean, after our experience with Brink, I became like a foot and ankle nerd. Like, that's <sighs> all I looked at. at people I was now. actually angry. Because I was too. we didn't even focus on that. I at was all. Different. Yeah. It there wasn't isn't a, a single bit of training I got. No certification. Nobody's talking Nothing. about the feet and Nothing. the ankles? Like, None of the certifications I had. Even my corrective exercise specialist, I don't remember ever uh, going in, into the ankle the and foot. I, I, uh -uh. The, the furthest I would get was the hips. Yeah. yeah. Everything was from the hips. I did nothing about the foot and ankle. Of course. Yeah, it blew me so away really. having being taught that too and then realizing like, wow, how many people like this is the limiting factor yep. right here. And then like that simple adjustment or fix like all of a sudden solves the Huge. issue. Our next caller is Michael from Toronto. Michael, what's happening, man? How can we help you? What's up, Mike? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, so first off, I just wanted to say how much I really appreciate you guys and the perspective that you guys bring to your podcast and how relatable it is. Um, and just a bit of background on me. I'm, I'm in my 40s. Uh, like Sal, I've got four kids and trying to keep fitness a priority while coaching the kids, sports teams and everything. I find that uh, listening to you guys and getting to listen in on your conversations really kind of helps to keep things in perspective a lot. So, so in addition to thanks for all the content that you guys fit, uh, provide fitness wise, really appreciate that perspective. Oh, thanks, yeah. man. Awesome. It, anyway, my uh, my question is specific to the landmine rotation exercise that's in phase two of Maps Performance. Um, so when I watch the male demo. The way he does it, he keeps his feet planted and he kind of rotates his torso from side to side. And then when I watch the female demo, she kind of keeps her, her torso stationary and it almost is like a, a side to side shoulder press. And then when I've done it in the past, I've always kind of like pivoted off of like my back foot. So my, so I'm kind of rotating even more. Um, and I, I've listened to you guys enough to know that you're probably going to say like, there's no wrong variation necessarily, <laughs> but I was hoping to kind of hear your perspective on like, what are the pros and cons of doing it in the various different ways? And like, what's the best way to apply? Great, each great of question. The yeah. Great, great question. Hey, who's, who was the female who, who was the model in that one? Who was uh, it? Kendra, I believe. Oh, it was Kendra, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, like you said, there's, there's multiple variations to it. Um, now in terms of like the actual, 
um, benefit from it. A lot of times I'll anchor for the most part and keep my hips <clears throat> kind of square and fixed. Uh, so that way I'm, I'm, I have a bit of anti-rotational effect to that with my lower half. And then I'm, I'm rotating across so I can engage, you know, my core a bit more that way. Uh, rotating with it is, is a little bit more, I would say functional in terms of like, like an athlete. Ath athletic yeah. yeah, pursuits with that. So I, I, I kind of go between <clears throat> both of those. Uh, and, and this is actually like brings up a good discussion in terms of like, you know, male, female models and like kind of our programs, there's little nuances and things that uh, people do that aren't necessarily wrong, but are a little bit different. And, and two, um, they, uh, and I'm kind of trying always to, to explain like, you know, if we standardize it completely, <clears throat> you know, that would, that would clear up a lot of confusion, but at the same time, like it's not wrong necessarily. It's just a different application to that same exercise. So this is one of those instances where, you know, it, depending on kind of the intent going into that exercise, what you want to get out of it, it could be a little bit more of an athletic pursuit with like kind of a more fluid rotation with that, or it could be more of a, a, a twisting, uh, opposing, uh, contraction to that. Yes. I, I literally, this is, so I train both. So with my clients and the way I always decided who, who was going to get what like version of this, almost always my athletes, I rotated the foot because an athlete, when they're playing a sport, they're never in this, like f very few sports. Are they in this fixed trunk position mm -hmm. while spinning or throwing their torso? Right. right. So I want to emulate yeah. as much of the type of movements that they would on the field or the court or wherever. So I would incorporate the pivoting of the foot and the hips all together. If I was training general population, clients that just want to be strong, healthy, fit, I actually like the trunk still. The reason for that is for the anti-rotation properties that Justin is saying. It's like, I'm really I'm trying to bulletproof their core. I want them to be able to reach back while their kids are in their car seat and be able to feed them and then come back so their trunk is in a stationary position. They're going to spin back and come back, and they're not going to hurt themselves doing something. Or they're going to be in their garden, and they're going to be grabbing a weed, and they're going to pull a weed to the left, and their feet are going to be planted in the same direction. And so I'm looking to bulletproof their core and protect them with the kind of anti-rotational properties that they get by keeping their their hips or their hips locked in that place but uh, yes neither one not neither one is right or wrong it's really like what's the desired outcome that i want from the the client that i have here i'll i'll simplify okay uh, more than that that was yeah, pretty no, simplify yeah no i'll do it. tell me my, be honest if he simplifies that more than what i just did <laughs> he won't have to you'll see for yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah. look uh the female version counter ro so i'm going to tell you what they are and then what you want to use them for okay <laughs> Counter rotation is the female version. The male version is rotation. And then the full extension version is where you complete the kinetic chain. All right, here's the application, okay? If you want to reduce injury, counter rotation for stability. If you want to develop your obliques with hypertrophy, you do the rotation version. And then the completing the kinetic chain is literally if you want to perform better in on the field or in a sport. So there's your three right there. Do I want to develop my obliques? Do I simply just want to increase stability? and reduce injury, or do I want to get faster mm. and better at rotation on the field? Those are, those are your three options. So you could pick whoever gave you the best answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad either. Uh, that's not, not, that's not bad. All you do is I, add I one. I do have a bit of a, a follow-up question, though, in terms of like just rep ranges and like when to go heavy and when to yeah. go light. Like Any advice in those terms? Yeah, I think – so with an exercise like that, you're – you're, you're, if you can do it controlled, that's yeah. going to be the, that's going to be the standard explosive is great for athlete. uh, athletic pursuits. Yep. Now, if you do you it explosive, thank you. Yeah. If yeah. you do it explosive, it's about the speed yep. and the control. It is not about how oh, heavy you can go. It's not the load. Yeah. So if you want to really load it and challenge yourself, you want to anchor yourself. So that, that's yeah. the one where we have the fixed hip yep. position. You're rotating with that anti-rotational. And if you're going fast, if you're doing for the explosive benefits don't do it to fatigue you want to okay. maintain the same rep speed throughout the whole set once you find the rep speed slow down you're done with the set because then you're not training explosive power anymore you're just training stamina which you can train stamina but there's better ways to do it than going explosive and then fatiguing and if i'm going to use sal's analogy if i was trying to develop hypertrophy in my obliques i'm going to go heavy and controlled yeah that's it yeah. if i'm trying to be more athletic i'm going to go light and and fast yeah, right? it's all about the full movement so and and obviously we're 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 over generalizing this whole exercise because 
every variation builds muscle. Every variation is going to put, protect you rotationally. Yeah. Every rotation, every variation is going to make you a little more athletic. But if we were to really like break this down, like you're that's kind right. of asking us to do, that's kind of how we look at it as how we're pursuing it with a client. Gotcha. Yeah. That's Hopefully. it, man. I hope that answers Did your question. Did we do a good job? Did we do a good job? No, that's perfect. Thank okay, you. Good. Yeah. That was a good question. <laughs> Five nobody's, stars. Yeah, yeah. nobody's asked something like that. I like Five that. Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, Mike. Thanks, Michael. Great. Thank you. All you right, got bro. it. That's fun. It's fun to talk about because we talk about variations and exercises for hypertrophy all the time. You know, narrow grip, wide uh -huh. grip, you know, more inner, outer, These whatever. These things are subtle too. This is more subtle and it's fun to talk about because uh, I think, that especially for trainers and coaches listening, because uh, it's not as apparent. It's not as easy to see what the difference Size is. black and white. Or the application. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you can take an exercise and you can make it more athletic, quote unquote, or more hypertrophy based or more protective from a stability standpoint. And uh, what we said with those three variations, you can almost apply similar uh, philosophies to lots of different movements yes. to produce those types Definitely. of results. I The reason why I like this question is because this, it, for the listener, I hope they pick up on this. Like, this highlights how toxic our space is and how easily you can take a movement and try and shit on another person who's teaching or coaching someone like that. Because there is so many variations to so many movements and there are better applications for it. And in the same sentence, they all complement a lot of times what the, what yeah. the person might be saying. So it's like, that's why this is like so much more nuanced than like, oh, that person's wrong the way they're teaching it. This is the right way. It's like, well, I, it depends. I yeah. mean, and and I, we, I think you've said before, Sal, like any exercise that you can perform uh, with good control and stability is not a bad exercise. Yeah. So as weird as it may seem or how unique it is to the way somebody else does it, if you can do it with good control and good form, it's a good exercise. Right. This is a this is a hard subject though for a lot of people because everything is so dogmatic. And, yes. And especially like when you go to learn something and be instructed on something, just, like they're going to say it just one way and this has to be just show, yeah. show them a Jefferson curl. That's the exercise I would love to do <laughs> in a gym and watch all the trainers. Your heads explode. explode. Yeah. Oh shit, what the <laughs> doing you know? yeah, yeah. not even knowing right our next caller is dean from oregon what's up dean how can we help you hey hello. what up what's happening Rockin', boys what up super stoked whoa hey, let's go hello. all right yes there we are uh so questions um i understand that all of your maps programs are suited for either cutting or bulking or maintenance like you can do anything uh, you can do it any way you want, but if you had to pick what ones would be best for bulking or maintenance, we literally just did it specifically. Yeah. Yeah. We did a whole episode <laughs> about this. Cause yeah. it's been a common did you really? question. Yeah. We, yeah. we just uh, recorded it yesterday. It's a common question. Is it a single topic? Is this single? a single topic? Hasn't dropped yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got an answer for you, Dean. Okay. Okay, uh, maintenance. Let's let's cut that one out. Cut or bulk. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. When you're going to switch into a cut or a bulk, the maps program that is most different from what you're currently doing will be the best one for either one. So you want to gotcha. introduce you want to introduce novelty when you switch into a cut or when you switch into a bulk because the novelty is going to in the cut maintain the most muscle or in the bulk help build the most muscle. So that's it. That's pretty yeah. much it. Now, so, among those, you know, we have some that are more athletic minded, more bodybuilding minded. That's up to you. Um, but uh, that's it. That's pretty much it. Are you a high reps so guy I, or low reps guy? Yeah, I got the uh, power lift and split. And uh, this is, I, I had a little more grace uh, weight wise because we just got back from, uh, we went two weeks in Hawaii and then two weeks of hunting. So as the kids say, I was living my best life and kind of uh, went a little ham. Yeah. So I don't have as much room to play with on that. Uh, but so that's why I didn't know if I should cut switch to main or what was the best scenario for, for it. Yeah. So for those two. So it, okay. It, uh, you haven't been training for the last two weeks, right? Four weeks. Four uh, weeks. Four no. week? It's been off and on. Like we, there was about a week difference between the hunting and uh, Hawaii, but yeah, the training has not been ideal for the last month. So, okay, if someone's in this position, I like to always go after building muscle and bulking first. 
just because you're going to get the benefits of you've you've lifted in the past yeah, before, off. you've taken time off, the body is primed for you to want to build muscle. Let's feed it and give it what it wants. Even though you may feel fluffy or a little more weight than you like, I still would I would start in a bulk. Yeah. Just a small gotcha. one, but I would start with a calorie surplus and stimulating to build muscle. And I would do that. And now maybe you only do that because you're an experienced lifter for one phase. So, and so if, let's say we run MAPS anabolic and I go, okay, put you in a calorie surplus. Let's run MAPS anabolic in a bulk. And then maybe by phase two or phase three, I transition you into a cut. So the, the, gotcha. key, the key is anytime I transition a client from a bulk or cut, doesn't matter which one, I want a novel stimulus. Now, a novel stimulus can be different exercises. It can be different rep ranges. The more novel, the better. So an example of even more novel would be you're running MAPS Anabolic for a bulk, and then you run a program like MAPS Performance for a cut because it's so di yeah. there's different exercises. There's different uh, adaptations, like we're going after endurance. Like There's a lot of different stuff in there, so it's going to be very novel. And to Sal's point, a novel stimulus is the best for building muscle and is the best for holding on to muscle. So the best thing you could do is to stick in one. And then when you transition the diet, you also transition what you're doing program wise. For the full program or for it's up like to you. each phase? It's okay. up to you. You can mix and match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how so, how long okay. do you plan on bulking for? Uh, I, like, Two two ten. I'm at like one ninety two right now. So two ten is about where I start to feel like I I oh. need to to cut back down. Well, you could do a so. good, you could do a good clean bulk for the for the entirety of Maps Anabolic. Then you could even do this, right? We could go we could go all day on how the different ways you could do this. Like if you're like, oh, uh, I want to bulk, but I don't want to get like too. I don't want to put too much. Money. So go three weeks in a surplus, then run one week of a maintenance or a deficit, and then go three weeks of a surplus, one week of a yeah, maintenance or deficit through the whole program of Maps Anabolic. Like literally do that's that. That's how I would do like a and then and then, then reverse that when you go into the next program. So three, go three one in the verse. So yeah. so then go to math performance and go three weeks in a cut with only one week into a maintenance or a surplus and three weeks. In, so you get what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, absolutely. So that's absolutely. A, that's a great strategy uh, for what you're basically asking. So even though there's other ways to do it, I like to do it that way. That's that's amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was just hard to tell because like. You never know, like when you start getting a little fluffy, it's hard to like just keep going with that, even though, you know, it's like you want to just cut back down to get get the the, the most uh, no, bang for your buck. If yeah. you do an if you do a, a proper bulk where you're maybe five hundred calories over maintenance and you start lifting, which you haven't been doing, you're gonna get lean you're probably gonna get a little leaner at the same time. One of the it's reasons one happen. of the reasons I like to go that way too is because when I'm off the diet or I go on vacation not only do I put on bad weight, but I also miss my protein intake. And, and there's and there's muscle and so, memory going on too and, because of his past. And right? so what ends up happening is I put on say ten pounds, let's say over a, a, like a crazy vacation trip. But yeah. the, what's even worse is I put on ten pounds on the scale, but I actually lost also five pounds of muscle. That happens all the time to people because they overconsume on you know let's say bad calories and they underconsume yeah. on nutrient dense calories and they're not training and and they're not training. Yeah. So I love to go on a bulk like let's feed the body what it actually wants. Let's send a mus mus uh, a muscle building signal and make sure I'm getting adequate protein so that real quickly the body will respond and I'll normally put on that five pounds that I lost. That five pounds of muscle comes back on really quick yeah. just by feeding the body the protein intake it needs and stimulating again. And so quickly my metabolism starts to rebound and I'm already starting to feel better. Even though I'm in a surplus, I already see my body shaping up differently, which is a, a, a very positive thing. And then that sets you up for a better cut than if you were to go right into a cut right now. How far should you push your, your bulk before you think like you think just one – it's more or about there, it's, it's more about preference? how you it's more about how you feel eating wise and how yeah. you feel with that weight on your body, right? So, I, and I think Sal's I've heard talk about this before. He knows when he gets, you know, a little over two fifteen, two twenty, his body starts telling him like that's. It doesn't matter even if it's good weight, even yeah, when he looks shrimp, feel comfortable. he yeah. doesn't feel comfortable there. So that's like his sign to come back. Mine is like about two thirty. I get over two thirty, and it's like eh, my body wants. I start Mine's to like three fifteen. So. <laughs> 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 Too much then. cheese. Yeah. Yeah. And then the and then the other variable is uh eating. Like like another thing, reason why I like to come back down when I get start getting a butt is like it just takes a lot of calories for me to maintain that weight. So if you're like, man, I'm stuff 
stuffing myself yeah, and I feel like it. I feel uncomfortable. Like that's a pretty good sign that totally. I'm, I'm uh, higher than I need to be. It's time to go the other direction. So it's really dependent on the person. Roger, Roger that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wish, uh, wish I would have got this message in a couple days earlier. It's okay, bro. Uh, you're good now. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. You're good now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway, All right. Yeah. All right, Dean. All right. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Thanks, right, man. Thanks right for all, man. Such good energy. Did he say love you? He, he did. did. He oh, did. Wow. He did. He's I'll, a very I'll happy, take that. Yeah. happy, nice guy. Was, we didn't give him anything, but I don't feel like he needed anything. No, yeah. he seemed excited. Yeah, I think he just wanted. I mean, that's a good question too. I mean, I feel like we get that all the time. So all we, the time. I can't we get wait a single that. topic. Can't episode. wait for that episode. Yeah, so, so we know we can just refer to that. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. It covered the bases. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, if you're trying to cut or you're trying to gain, the the priorities muscle. Whether you're trying to maintain or build it. It's always a priority, so that's the goal with the workout. I mean, do, does this not highlight to you like how well the like, people have been marketed to for so of long? Of course. Oh yeah. It's just, you know what would happen if we came out with a maps bulk? I know. Or a maps cut? I know. We might have to, <laughs> and include diet with it or something because I get watch. We're gonna get DMs now. Please make that. Yeah. Uh, and I get it. I get why people want it. They want it. They want to have the full. Tell me everything I need to do. Within this program, so you just need like a different design, is what you're saying. It's so Same funny though, like application. People say that they want that, right? And then you tell them that, and then they go find somebody else who said something. Well, Brett Contreras says this, or Lane Norton says oh. this, or is this like, well, you asked for a very specific answer, yeah. and I gave it to you, even though I could tell you that it depends, and everything is nuanced. Yeah. And then you're gonna go back and hold it against me I that know. someone else said something different. It's like, God, dude, you can't, you can't win. Our next caller is Brittany from California. Hi, Brittany. How can we help you? Hello. So first off, just like everyone else, I want to say how much I appreciate you guys in this podcast. I came from climbing full time. So going into a normal gym was very intimidating for me. So I just want to say you guys have made me feel a lot more confident going into a pretty intimidating space. Awesome. Oh, great. Yeah, just want to appreciate that. So on to my question, I've been doing an anterior slash posterior full body split for the last two months and just to kind of switch up from my usual five day split of you know quads glutes push pull a little bit of cardio in there and i feel like the majority of women really love their leg days and i don't <laughs> coming from climbing background i love my upper body days so this split has been a pretty fun switch up from the usual with just sprinkling in some legs but something I've been struggling with is just whether or not I'm getting enough recovery with doing anterior and posterior days back to back. And I do have a low steady state cardio day in between that block, but I still just worry if this is even sustainable and if I'm getting enough recovery. So the overarching question is when does the anterior posterior full body split make sense to implement and how do you ensure that you're getting enough recovery? There's a lot of factors uh, that, by the way, uh, climbing is way scarier than a gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, there's, a, there's a lot of factors that will contribute to um, recovery and your body's ability to adapt. So it's, it's hard. It's, it's typically not just the split, right? So what does your workout look like for the week? Let's start there. So let's start with Monday and let's go all the way through the, the last workout of the week. Yeah. So Monday, I usually start as an anterior then the next day is a posterior, Wednesday, low steady state cardio, Thursday, anterior, Friday, posterior, and then Saturday, maybe another low steady state cardio day, and then an, a recovery day on Sunday, usually. Okay. And how many how many sets are you doing per body part on that? Um, Probably about four sets for the first three exercises, which are usually compound. So, okay. And so, so let's, so anterior, you're looking at quads, for example. Okay. How yeah. many, how many sets for quads would, would you do on that day? Um, probably six to eight total, okay. probably. So that would be 12 to 16 for the week, right? Cause you're going to double that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now why are you asking about recovery? What are you noticing? Are you noticing that you're feeling like you can't recover well? You're getting a little sore. Yeah. Well, and especially, you know, going from an anterior the day the day before and then trying to go hard on, you know, my other leg uh, exercises the next day. It's like, man, yeah. I feel like I'm really not able to put out what I would want to the next day yeah. since I'm still using 
some capacity of my legs. Of course. Within, what, yeah. Like, yeah. what led you to want to do a split like that where you split the front to back just for the audience who doesn't know what anterior posterior means too. So what made you do that? Side side. Yeah. It was really just the variety for me and not loving the full on leg days. I found myself dreading just going in and having to annihilate my legs. So I like just kind of sprinkling it in along with upper body. So then I was just overall excited to have that day in general. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I think you're going to love maps anabolic. anabolic. I'd love for you to run maps anabolic and you're going to get exactly that. You're going to, and you're, you're only really doing, you know, one Ex main exercise for your legs every day. It's going to be like a, a big compound lift, like the either squat it's or three jump. full body workouts a week with trigger sessions on the days in between. But you know, okay. So there's a couple ways you do this. I think Adam's <clears throat> a maps out of bulk would be great for you. If you're feeling like you're overtrained and starting to get burned out, you probably are, um, where you, you, you probably are going too hard too often. There's a, now with the current split that you have, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could lower the volume. You could lower the intensity. You could alternate either. So it could be something like, Monday hard, Tuesday easy, then you go back to Thursday easy, Friday hard. So each, so the anterior day once a week is hard and once a week is easy. And the posterior day, uh, workout during the week, since there's two of each, one of them is hard as one of, one of them's easy. And you want to pair hard and easy, hard and easy. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. So that's one way, that's one way to play around with what you're currently doing. Um, okay. now that's without me knowing all the details you, and it would take a long time for me to go through your workout and look at everything. Um, uh, but that's without me knowing any other details. Um, I, I bet you, if we send you maps anabolic and you just follow that, it'll blow your mind. Yeah. I, I think if you do that, you're going to be like, okay, this is a total game changer. Um, yeah. so if wow. we send that to you, will you follow it? Oh, absolutely. I've been thinking about it for forever. So yeah. <laughs> done deal. Yeah. Let yeah. me send that to you. Do the advanced okay. version, which is three days, three full body workouts. Okay. Do the trigger sessions in between, and, and you'll yeah. be set. We it, could patch whatever you're doing together, but I think this will like totally set you straight. Totally. Sure. Yeah. yeah Some, sometimes too, even though we didn't address this, sometimes recovery too has uh, so has to do with what you're doing nutritionally, like yeah, or uh, sleep. Yeah, of course, right. So if uh, I don't know if you're in a calorie deficit right now, are you good about hitting your protein intake? What does that kind of look like? Yeah, I definitely. I definitely shoot for, um, I think like a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Like that's definitely a big focus, but I have been kind of in a deficit through, through the summer. So you're more likely to overtrain, yep. uh, when you're in a, a deficit, although a surplus won't cure every, <laughs> every hard workout. That's right. So, yeah. um, so it does make a difference. Uh, but the workout makes a, a big difference also. It must be interesting for you because I've I've trained climbers before. <laughs> oh really? Yes, I have. And to be yeah. to be successful at, at you know bouldering or climbing, you essentially need to have uh very mobile small legs and very strong uh you know, hands, upper body, back. Mm -hmm. In order to perform really well, how long did you the climb for? Weight ratio is going to be um, probably point. about eight to nine years. Wow! Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I bet so it's a big switch. I bet I bet you got really strong hands yep. from doing that. Yeah, yeah, I did, and that's in my back and my upper body. I think that's also why I'm just partial to it because it's something that you know I've been strong at for a long time, mm -hmm. and so. Yeah, it definitely makes a lot of sense why I struggle with my with my leg days. Okay, so. I, but I also think there's massive potential because of that. That's what's good. most women actually struggle with upper body yeah. strength, mm -hmm. and since you've done such a good job of building that, I, I think legs will will respond and grow and so, develop. So, really, if really you quick. modify maps anabolic at all, what I would do is take some volume from the upper body exercises and throw it to the lower body stuff. So, literally, if it says you know, uh, three sets of rows, three sets of bench press, three sets of overhead press. You could do two sets of each, take that extra set of each exercise and throw it on your squats or your deadlifts or, you know, your lower body exercises. That way, if you're looking to balance things out, because like I said, I've trained climbers and after years of climbing, you do develop a body that looks like you climb, which is small lower body, yeah. you know, muscular upper body. So that's that'd be one way to modify. But even if you followed it as laid out, I think it'll blow. Your I mind. mean, honestly, my recommendation would be follow it as as it is for most people. It's like follow it exactly how we laid it out because I think you're going to learn a lot and get a lot just from that. And then when we come back around and do it again, I would I would make modifications yeah. based off of what you said to me. Like, you're like, man, I really wish my legs would come up even more than I would go exactly what yeah, Sal said. Yeah, but you'll see some real good strength gains in your lower body from that program. 
Awesome. Okay, yeah, sweet. Yeah. yeah, I will definitely do that. I have one little question about that. So when would you recommend for someone to do a split like this? You know, here's, here's the interesting thing about splits. Okay. Um, here's when they start to make sense when, okay, full body three days a week generally is best for most people, period. End of story. It's like 85% of people will do best on that. When, when it becomes advantageous to break the body up even more is when those full body workouts get really long. So, you know, if you're, if you've got like really good recovery, you're doing a sprint in terms of adding volume to your workouts and now you're doing the whole body, but you're doing like nine sets per body part. I mean, you're in the gym for an hour and 45 minutes, then it starts to make sense to kind of break things up. Um, so this is why you see bodybuilders train that way. Um, uh, you know, typically. Yeah. It's a bodybuilder type of training, right? Yeah. And it, the other, and it's not that it builds more muscle. No, it's just no. that they're, they train with such high volume. And they're also extremely committed to never missing. And yeah. what we have found from training clients and ourselves is, you know, vacation comes around the corner. Oh, I got sick last week. There's oh. less flexibility. There. So when you miss a day in a split, it really it's fucks whole up. Body part. It fucks up the routine. It's like, oh man, what do I do? Do I pick up where I left off or do I start over again? And so, and what ends up happening most often than not, people tend to skip to things they don't want to do and they just do more of what they like to do, which is not necessarily what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And so when you run a full body routine, you could miss, you could miss two of the days in the week and you still are, are hitting the body evenly and so you'll see this nice balance in that yeah. person's physique. And so I think that's part of the reason why people are so successful on a full body in comparison to you're a less split. You to overdo it with your legs, especially if that's something you don't train all that often. Like I know for me, I had to, I had to transition from split to full body was great because now it's like, I didn't, I have a tendency to kind of get in and, and crush the workout. And I did too much and that to, to the point where it affected my next workout. So, you know, to, to spread it out a little more evenly like that really helped. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank yeah. you guys. We're sending, we're sending that over to you, Brittany. Thanks, Brittany. Oh, thank you. All right. You got it. I train. I train one dude who is a. a rock, I train a young lady too, who's rock climber. I, I train, train a few people. Yeah. I never. I'll, I'll never forget. I shook his hand. Yeah, I know. And uh, yeah. I. I right when I shook his hand, I said, "Do you climb? You rock climb?" He's like, "How'd you know?" I mean, because he had like Ben Greenfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's it like, wasn't just ew. his. It wasn't his forearms, although those were muscular. It was his fingers. It's his finger. That's like Ben Greenfield. It's like finger. You can ben, feel the whole like tug. Ben, the ben back Greenfield's hand. hands yeah. feel like you're shaking a shaking a six foot eight, three hundred pound dude's hands. Yeah, that's what his hands feel like. Yeah, but he's yeah. on a, what a what hundred? What does he weigh? Hundred eighty pounds. Hundred eighty pounds yeah. at best. But he, his callus hands, fingers yeah, his and, hands yeah. are all the, the big old sausages and yeah, they're yeah. calloused up and yeah, no, totally. Yeah, yeah. But you, but I mean, but the, to be a good climber, it's like it's all upper body size, yeah, it's lower all, body all leverage. Underdog. Great, great advantage great though for weight. a female client because that tends to be one of the more difficult. I mean, upper body strength is really hard. You're for women right. To develop. They, they will develop, and this is a fact. Yeah, it's less common. Women develop lower body muscles uh, better than they do upper body muscles. Yes, there's a disparity between men and women in, on the whole body. But the lower body, it's a smaller disparity. Oh, I, I've, I don't know if you guys remember this. I know I've had lots of female, I had a lot of female clients that could outperform a lower body than my male clients. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of clients that I train that were the men that would crush some of what my, my female clients could do on the leg press and squatting right, right. and stuff like that. So you can, as a female, you can really develop the legs. And so the fact that that's a, her weak area is also means lots of opportunity for building muscle. Yeah, good point. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our fitness and health guides. They're free. They cost nothing. Check them out. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs>